lot of people excited about food now more than ever. And yet nobody ever wants to cook it themselves because it takes so much time. And secondarily, because they think they lack the skill. And that is why I'm going to show you the exact five meals that anybody can make at any skill level, no questions asked, no practice required. Get the ingredients, cook the food. It's quick and it's guaranteed to be delicious. A few guidelines for you here. Number one, none of these will take more than 30 minutes. Number two, all of these ingredients should be easily and readily available for you unless you live in an area where most things may be typically hard to find, like a desert. And the most important rule, number three, don't worry about it being perfect. Worry about having fun and let cooking do the talking. So let's begin. We cannot make this video without the number one dish any great cook starts with. It is a simple but beautiful country style omelet with mixed greens. Oh, that's so boring. Trust me, this is something that when you make it and you taste it, you'll be proud. Best part of all, it can easily be made and cleaned up to serve just one person. Remove the leaves from one small head of baby lettuce. That could be butter lettuce, spring mix, whatever. It's gonna be about one to one and a half cups of leaves. Wash in a salad spinner, spin, spin, spin until dry as possible. Now set that to the side. Grab yourself a small mixing bowl and add one tablespoon or 15 grams of whole grain mustard, one clove of garlic grated, one teaspoon or four grams of lemon zest, two teaspoons or eight grams of lemon juice, a little bit of salt to taste. And then while constantly whisking, drizzle in a quarter cup or 60 grams of extra virgin olive oil. That's it. By the way, all that stuff could be eyeballed if you wanted to. It's still gonna taste good. Now we'll toss our salad after we make our omelet. Heat your pan over medium heat, two medium sized nonstick pan, add just enough butter to coat the bottom, about a tablespoon or two. Beat four eggs in a small mixing bowl, season them lightly to taste with salt. Once the butter is melted and bubbling, which should take like 15 to 20 seconds, add your eggs. And then as the eggs set, continuously bring the edges towards the center all the way around the pan, tilting your pan to fill that empty part of the pan with uncooked eggs. Then once the eggs are about 90% of the way set, add any kind of grated cheese you want on one half of the omelet. In this case, I did two ounces or 56 grams of grated Gruyere. Fold your omelet over, and optionally you can add another small knob of butter just to toast the bottom of the omelet. But honestly, the omelet's done at this point. So if you don't want to spend any more time, just grab a plate, line your plate up with the pan and carefully flip to land your omelet on your plate. Then just add your greens to your bowl with dressing, toss, 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 and place on the plate. That is it. This whole process, when you get good at it, takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And pretty much all this stuff can be put in a dishwasher so the cleanup is very simple. But how good is it? This is something that I used to make all the time for school, sometimes before I went to go line cook. This is a very reasonable breakfast you can make at home. And look at this, you got a cheesy, moist, perfect omelet. It's salty, it's fatty, it's moist, buttery. For those of you who don't know, let me give you a little education. This is the Jacques Pepin country style omelet. Give your flowers and give your respect to that man. The salad, a lot of people think a salad is something you skip. It's something boring, right? But this, this is on ludicrous mode. There's an art to making great dressed greens. I didn't think salads were really all that. So I worked in a restaurant that really taught me how to make a salad and that is salt, lots of it at multiple stages, season the actual greens, not just the dressing. And you have this like incredible salty, acidic, refreshing, but also like deeply flavored green that goes perfectly with this. It cuts the richness. This is a perfectly balanced meal and it's healthy and it's easy. I mean, come on. If this isn't the perfect kickoff, I don't know what is. Moving on. There are a few things that you need in a kitchen when it comes to making great food. And one of those things is a quality pan. And since we're talking meals that anyone can make, let's talk about cookware anyone can use. That brings me to today's sponsor, Made in Cookware. Now these are pro level products crafted in Italy, but made for home cooks. Given my restaurant background, I'm kind of picky when it comes to the quality of my cooking pans and so on and so forth. That's why I love Made in. Genuinely, their stainless steel line has fantastic heat retention thanks to their five ply stainless steel material. Do I know what five ply is? No, but I know that it has even heating. Their handles stay cool while on the stove while their ergonomic design keeps things balanced. Not to mention their pans are used in thousands of pro-level kitchens, including multiple three Michelin star restaurants. And since these can withstand the demand of a pro-level kitchen, you know that they'll last for you for years to come. Maiden offers a variety of pro-level cookware in different shapes, sizes, materials, which you can literally see me using through my videos throughout the years, like before I even had a partnership with them. So check out their cookware using the link in the description to save on your order. Now, if you want a fancier breakfast that only takes maybe another five minutes, you can make a quick chilaquiles. Now, these aren't hyper traditional, but they are extremely delicious. So, by heating a medium sized pan over medium heat, drizzle in about two tablespoons or 30 grams of canola oil, a rough chopped half sweet onion, and four cloves of garlic, also rough chopped. Season to taste with salt and cook until just soft, about two to three minutes. Now, to a blender or a food processor, add two cups or 240 grams of crushed tomatoes, five chipotle chilies in adobo, one tablespoon or 15 grams of Nor chicken soup base. Look, hear me out. All right, this shit, it's different. It's optional, but it's basically chicken. 
chicken soup base with MSG. Add in your cooked onion and garlic that you just cooked a second ago, season lightly with salt, and blend on high until as smooth as possible. And look, if you don't have a blender, you could totally just rough chop your chipotles, rough chop your cooked vegetables, and toss all those other ingredients together in a bowl and stir, and it would be fine. Just wouldn't be as smooth. It'll be a little more rustic. So yes, you could still do this with just a pot or a pan. Now, remember that pan you just used? Guess what? You don't have to wash that. All you gotta do is put it back on the heat over medium, add your puree to that, and let that cook down for five minutes. Guess what, buddy? You got tortilla chips in the cabinet? Perfect. Add as many tortilla chips as will fit in the pan, around five to eight ounces. Serve with the spatula until the chips are evenly coated in the sauce, and serve. And then at that point, you can put whatever you want on this. You can add some Mexican crema, maybe some queso fresco, pickled red onions if you have them, or fresh red onions. You wanna toss scrambled eggs or fried eggs in it? Cool, scramble some eggs or fry an egg in a pan until it's medium, maybe some avocado, some cilantro. I mean, look at this thing. This is beautiful. And you can put whatever you want on it. Really, the base is just the chips coated in the sauce. And you're literally just repurposing pre-made bagged tortilla chips and transforming them. And obviously, an egg on top, I think, is kind of a requirement. But all the other things are up to you. So let's taste and rate. Chilaquiles. You could skip the whole blending process, just throw everything into a pan, add your chips, and call it a day. This is a very fast recipe. It looks impressive. You could serve it to guests or you could have it for yourself. The whole goal of this is to get a little bite of everything, you know? It's salty, it's acidic, you got the creaminess from the avocado, little pops of flavor from the pickled onion. It's like a multi-course meal on one plate. Even though this is a quickie chilaquiles, it's not hyper, hyper, hyper traditional. There are not gonna be many places you go that are going to taste this good. Don't believe me? Maybe try making the recipe because it's easy as fuck. Now, moving on. Well, let's talk lunch. I want something like a gourmet, glorious, unforgettable sandwich, not just turkey on a dry, cold piece of bread. This happens to be many line cooks' favorite because, as we've heard before, it's one of Anthony Bourdain's go-tos for a quick, cheap, and delicious meal. Get the nicest bread you can get. Sourdough would be ideal. You can also use burger buns or a Kaiser roll. It's up to you. So heat a 10-inch nonstick pan over medium heat. Lightly grease with a little bit of oil. Then in the shape of your bread, mound on anywhere between four to eight thin slices of mortadella in the pan and then just let it sit. If you want to weigh it down with another pan or whatever you got, you can do that, but it's not necessary. And then just let that cook for about three minutes and flip and you'll see a beautiful crispy brown mortadella bit on the bottom. Let the other side crisp up, add one or two slices of your favorite cheese, in this case I have provolone, and cover it with an overturned mixing bowl, lid, or whatever the hell you got. You can even use foil. Cut off the heat and let that cheese melt. Now remove your cheesy mortadella from the pan. Add a little butter to the same pan, yep, that's right, you don't need anything else, and toast your bread in the pan over medium heat, about a minute or two, and take it a little bit of crispy, crunchy. Now, as that's toasting, spread on a little bit of spicy mustard on that slice, then add your mortadella on top of that. Now, on your other slice of bread, spread a little mayo, top your sandwich with the other slice. Then after about two minutes of toasting, flip and toast the other side of bread, basically like a grilled cheese. This isn't making sense here. You pull it off, you slice it in half, ideally on a bias, because we all know that that creates more sandwich. It's a mathematical equation, trust me. And you have a beautiful, cheesy, I mean, god damn, look at this. All done in one pan, minimal ingredients, maximum delicious. And you could make this for a dinner party and ain't nobody gonna be mad at you, brother. God, I wish I wasn't on a diet. Holy sh Look, this is a sandwich that can all be made in one pan. It requires no prep at all. If you don't have to slice your bread, all you gotta do, mound your meat in a pan, put some cheese on it, toast your bread, and do it all in the pan and eat it. You can make a number of these back to back. You saw the juice. Now let's let this goose loose. That feels illegal. This is what the Cubano always wanted to be. Sorry. There's so much effort involved in a Cubano and you end up with a sandwich that tastes great, but it's not mind boggling. This is the kind of mind boggling you expect from a Cubano where it's fatty, rich, the mustardy flavor, but it's not so acidic that it detracts from the sandwich. The funk from the provolone and the mortadella makes this so juicy. It's got some toothsomeness to it and the crunch of the bread. I mean, if you use the right bread in this, almost no effort for a luxurious sandwich. Anyone can make this, you can, moving on. Now let's transition to what I call liner or lunch dinner. This is good for lunch, dinner, a snack, a group of people, and it is arguably the easiest, most important pasta dish that anyone can make and everyone should know. It is pasta al yo yo yo. Italians, how did I do, huh? I've been practicing, okay? Get a large six to eight quart pot filled with water and bring it to a boil over medium high heat. If you don't know how to boil water, that's okay. All right, I'm not judging. I'm judging. Once that water is boiling, season the water very generously, okay? I want it to be damn near as salty as the ocean. I'm not even joking. Now, once that's boiling, add one package, which is typically one pound or 450 grams of spaghetti to the water and cook according to package directions. Now, while that's cooking, we're gonna use one more pan here, a large one for the pasta. So just reserve a half cup of pasta water, drain it, and then do all of the following that I'm about to show you. You would do it in the pot that you just cooked the pasta in. That's how you keep this one pot if you want it one pot. You're gonna add two thirds of a cup or 150 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil. Heat that over medium heat and 
immediately add anywhere from four to 14 cloves of thinly sliced garlic. I did 14 because Papa likes it garlicky. If you don't want to peel that much garlic, totally fine. Now cook that lightly in the oil just until it becomes fragrant. Then cut off the heat, add three teaspoons or 12 grams of chili flakes. And guess what? You don't even need to drain the pasta. Just get some tongs, whatever you can to fish that out and add the cooked pasta directly to the pan. Yes, it's okay to get a little bit of water in there, trust me. And then just begin tossing that to combine. You can always add a couple tablespoons of the pasta water to help emulsify that into a sauce. Then add super goddamn finely chopped parsley, about a quarter cup or 10 grams. Toss, toss, toss and serve on a plate. You don't have to make it as fancy as I did, but I did use a carving fork, do a little twirly too, all right? And optionally top with a little bit of fresh grated Pecorino Romano or Parmigiano and fresh cracked black pepper. This pasta requires six ingredients and all of those are incredibly easy to find and most are pretty inexpensive. So is it really that good? This is quite possibly the one pasta dish I think anyone in the entire world can make and probably has the ingredients for already. You could even remove the cheese. That's it. Josh, what about the water? If you don't have running water, I think maybe you have other priorities than maybe watching a YouTube video. Go, go, get off of here. And even with just a single spaghetti strand, I already know everything about this pasta. It is so flavorful for how minimalist it is. A little spicy from the red pepper flakes, the freshness of the parsley, and if you're adding the cheese, oh. This is an iconic pasta dish for a reason, and anyone can make it, including you. Moving on. Our final dish, which I believe to be is one of the easiest and greatest items you could make for yourself to create leftovers or for a group of people to impress. First, you'll need a half pound or 225 grams of thinly sliced protein. That can either be ribeye, if you want to drop a little extra cash, or pork Boston butt. Slice it as thinly as you can. What helps with slicing thin? Well, you could freeze it for a little bit, but that takes time, so you can skip that part if you need. Now, to a large mixing bowl, add half a cup or 80 grams of cornstarch. Add in your protein and toss until fully coated. Then heat either a large pan or a large wok over medium high heat. Add just enough oil to coat the bottom, about two to three tablespoons. Then once that's so hot, add in your protein and sear for one to two minutes per side. It's gonna look crispy, it's gonna look borderline deep fried, that's good. Take it out, add half a yellow onion thinly sliced, one jalapeno thinly sliced, and the whites of one bunch of green onions also thinly sliced. Two cloves of garlic finely chopped and a half inch knob of ginger grated. Now immediately stir fry that aggressively for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then optionally you can add one teaspoon of four grams of shrimp paste, stir fry that for about another minute or two. Then add your beef back to the wok, followed by one one teaspoon or four grams of granulated sugar, one tablespoon or 15 grams of rice wine vinegar, one tablespoon or 10 grams of soy sauce, and two teaspoons or eight grams of sweet soy sauce, which the sweet soy sauce is optional but recommended. Stir fry and toss to coat, and you'll notice something magic happens here. The cornstarch that enrobes the beef turns the sauce saucier, glossier, and beautiful-er. Cut off the heat, and then optionally, but highly recommended, add another two cloves of finely chopped garlic. That's just a technique thing. It's not gonna change it dramatically, but it does add a very deep garlic flavor, which most people go, Goo Goo Gaga over. Now pop that onto a plate, garnish with toasted sesame seeds and some thinly sliced green onion. This dish has probably been one of the most favorited stir fry dishes I have ever put out. And I think that it's something that anyone can make very quickly within 15 to 20 minutes and can easily be increased or decreased in portion size to serve a party or just yourself. It's fast and anyone can make it, but will everyone like it? Hello? Obviously you can use cheaper cuts. You can use chicken thigh, pork chop. I use ribeye because I fucking wanted to. It's not about how much you spend on the meat. It's about how easy this process is. That's unreal. So Vic has told me that he makes this dish as a go-to pretty much every week. And to make it cheap, he uses pork Boston butt. It's fast, it's delicious. This is like what you would get going to a gourmet Pan-Asian restaurant. The meat's deeply caramelized. It's got umami, it's sweet, it's salty, it's fatty, it's rich, but it's also very balanced. The melding of the flavors of the onion and the jalapeno in this somehow feels like they belonged together all along. Like they were married in another life and they had four kids, but that was a past life, a life they may not know about yet, but one they'll soon to find out about. Or at least you'll have found out about making something easy at home that anyone can make at any skill level that can be thrown together last minute for either multiple people or yourself. Thanks again to Maiden for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to save on your order. Now, don't forget to subscribe and goodbye. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to drink water.